What's going on, Core Kids? We're back, we're back, we're back, we're back. I got something for you. Are you ready? Look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it. The devil can't have me or my family. This is an eviction notice to the enemy. Say, the chain breakers in the room. And there's no telling what he's gonna do. Everybody say, break, 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 break. I like doing that. Break, 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 break. Chain breakers in the room. And there's no telling what he's gonna do. Woo! You guys love that song? I know, I know you love it. I know you love it. Hey, why don't you do a video of you singing and dancing and doing the whole thing and then send it in to CoreKidsRevivalTV at gmail.com. Do it, or better yet, tag me. Tag me, tag me, tag me. Put it in your stories, have your mom and dad post it and tag me. I'm super excited. Today we are gonna expose witchcraft and we're gonna talk about what are witches are they real hmm are they fake are they made up is it just a story is it just in the movie are there actual real witches and what does the Bible say about this particular topic because the Bible has a lot to say about witches and warlocks and wizards and we're gonna talk all about it today and I cannot wait by the way for the next couple weeks, we're gonna be talking about these things. Listen, the world wants to put out all these movies right now, Hocus Pocus and, and Casper the Friendly Ghost and all this, as they begin to gear up to celebrate a straight up demonic holiday that was made for demons. And so what we're gonna do over here on this side is we are gonna train you, equip you, and raise you up in the word of God so that you don't fall prey to all of this nonsense during this season. This is a season for the revivalist. Come on, this is not a, oh, I just hope this season goes away. I can't wait for it to be over. No, 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 we're gonna thrive in this season. We're gonna take back the land, take back the ground in the mighty name of Jesus. So why don't you go ahead and get out your sword? Get it out, get it out, get it out. By the way, I've got an announcement for you. I'm super excited because we have a couple different things that are really cool for kids now. Number one, we have our core kids Bible study on Wednesday night. It's on Zoom. So we have that every single Wednesday night. We also do a core kids live Zoom. That's on Saturdays at 11 o'clock in the morning. Right after core kids Revival TV episodes, all of us hop over to the Zoom and hundreds of kids, it's, it's been growing and growing and growing. We're all in there preaching, prophesying, sharing dreams, praying over each other. I mean, the kids are on fire. I haven't even seen adults in my life sometimes act like these kids act. It is mind blowing. So if you wanna be on fire for God, or you're like, where are the kids that are on fire for God? Let me tell you where they are. They're in the core kids, get connected. So we have two Zooms. We've got Wednesday night Bible studies now on Zoom. We've got our 11 o'clock Saturday mornings, our like a morning of fire and, and, and revival. And we have a Core Kid app. We have uh, one for teenagers. Yep, if you're 13 to 17, you get to be in our Core Teen app with hundreds of teenagers who are also on fire for God. And they have a Zoom call every Monday and every Friday. So look at all these times that you can actually get connected and get your spirit fed. This is amazing. We are in revival. We are seeing a massive move of kids experiencing the power of God like never before. And I'm super excited. So you get connected by going to coregroupmentorship.com. Your parent signs up and you automatically get in. It's just a service that we give to all the kids of our core students, our core families, our moms and dads. We bless their children and the teens with this additional ministry. All right, you got your sword out. I'm ready to use it. Every day, you need to be reading the word. If your Bible has dust on it, you're not reading it enough. I know some of you are like, I read it on the phone. Okay, sometimes the phone can be distracting. Sometimes the iPad can be distracting. Hello, somebody. So, when I'm in this, I don't get a little notification that pops up right here. When I'm in this, I don't get a little, oh, hold on, it's someone's calling me, hello? Oh yeah, I didn't call you back, I was reading the Bible. See, I don't, I don't get that when I'm in the Word here, paperwork. So make sure that you're using it. 
All right, let's talk about something. This is a little, ooh, brace yourself. We need to go there. Witches, warlocks, wizards, sorcerers, necromancers, mediums, psychics. Are they real? Are witches real? Are there actual people that are over there doing spells? Are there actual people that are actually, you know, doing all this evil stuff behind closed doors that we don't know about? The answer is yes. Yes, there are. If you know my testimony, you'll know that I actually came out of and was delivered from a lifestyle of being a witch. I practiced that. I wasn't like, oh no, this is bad. The devil had me tricked in my mind and I was doing things that were against God but the Lord delivered me. And that is why I preach so hard about witchcraft. That is why I talk so much about using your authority to cast the devil out of your life. That's why, because I've been there and I know how much torment that witchcraft can bring to a person's life because I had to go through it. And it was by the grace of God that I got out with my mind still sound the enemy was trying to make me go crazy. So let's talk about it. I am reading again from this book by Becky Fisher. It is called Magic and the Bible. And it is a little section in here and it is called Our Witches Real. And all at the bottom, all these scriptures, you guys need to do some homework and look all those scriptures up because they're very good. So traditionally, a witch was believed to be a woman who practiced black magic with the aid of demons or familiar spirits for the purpose of doing evil. A witch is not a spirit. So it's not like, oh, you're like, oh no, that there's a, there's a demon that's actually a witch with the little pointy hat and the little cauldron and da, da, da. No, a witch is a person who is being deceived by demons and has the influence of demons in their life to do these different witchcraft practices. A witch does not have a green skin like we think and a big old wart on her nose. It's a human that tapped into demonic powers and performs witchcraft. They cast spells and they do all kinds of things related to witchcraft. A warlock would be the same thing as a witch, but it's a man, it's a male. A wizard is another name for a warlock. And all of these people are human beings who have magical powers. They think they have magical powers. And the reason why the devil tricks them into making them feel like they have power because he helps them do things. Are you hearing me? So um, like a witch may say, okay, I'm going to put a spell over here on this person. And then those demons are listening and they begin to go and make things happen. And so that when the person watches what happens, they go, wow, I'm powerful. This witchcraft is making me powerful. I can do anything because I am performing witchcraft. And it is a lie. It is fake. It is deceiving them and it's leading them into a horrible place. And I'm going to tell you right now, People that are serving another God and are not serving our God, they will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. They will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. So we need to stay away from that. We do not need to be afraid of witches. I used to practice witchcraft and I'll tell you, my mom was praying me out of that. And I believe that we can actually spread the gospel, move in the power of God, tear down demonic strongholds, and see a whole bunch of people that are in that lifestyle now come over to our side and give their life to Christ. That's what I wanna see. We wanna see people coming out of new age practices, putting down those spells, not worrying about tarot cards and all this nonsense, but following Jesus and understanding that there is real power in the name of Jesus and the blood of the lamb. Come on in here, somebody. And so the term in the Bible, when the Bible says witch, it was connected with anyone 
who practice sorcery, divination, fortune telling, um, someone who interpreted omens, somebody that was performing like sacrifices with animals or um, like human sacrifices even for the purpose of gaining some sort of magical power. Um, also, the Bible talks what's called somebody a witch that was actually calling up the dead, speaking with people who had died, which we know are familiar spirits. Yep, they're familiar demons pretending. And if you didn't see that episode on our ghost reel, then you need to go back and watch that episode. All of these activities that I just listed are absolutely 100% forbidden in the Bible. Literally forbidden. God says that these things are an abomination to him. He cannot even stomach it. It was so bad in the Old Testament. Listen, are all you are you guys big kids? Are we got big kids in the room? Okay, because I'm gonna talk to the big kids real quick. If you're super little and you're like you, you're tuning me out, just close your ears real quick. In the Bible, the Bible would say if there was a witch among you, that they are to be stoned, that they are to be they are to be cast out, they are to be put to death. I gotta give you the Bible because it's what the Bible says. I'm not giving you baby Bible. I'm giving you real Bible. And now, obviously, we don't run around killing people because we are under a new covenant in Christ Jesus. Hello, somebody. And we don't run around condemning people to, you're going to hell, you're going out, you're going to, no, we don't do that. We let the Lord be the judge of that, but we can pray for them and we can also bring them up on their awareness and say, hey, my brother, my sister, listen, I'm gonna keep it real with you. Man, you practicing that witchcraft? Man, that's gonna pull you away from God. And there's gonna come a day where you're gonna be face to face with God. And if you reject him now, he'll reject you later. So you gotta repent, you gotta give your life to Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life. That witchcraft, that's giving you fake, uh, like a fake type of power. It's making you think that you've got something, but you don't. But in Jesus, you will have the real power of the Holy Spirit to overcome the devil and overcome these life struggles. The power is in Jesus, it's not in anything else. We need to have those conversations with people. It's okay. That's why you're being trained up right now. Because we're talking about it in the in witches in the Old Testament, right? And there were witches in the Old Testament. And I'm gonna be doing another episode later on in Core Kids about the witch of Endor. We'll learn all about that. Um, so they were considered to be idolaters, where they put witchcraft and other gods before God. So witches, they actually turned away from the true and living God and they gave an alliance to demons. They ignored God's orders when he said, don't have any other gods before me. Which is, um, even in people in Wicca and that type of religion, they will actually think that they are a god. They will think that the plant is a god and the dog can be a god and dirt and flowers. And they put all these gods out there. But the Bible says, you shall have no other god besides me. That's what God says. And it just is what it is. Nobody can come before God. And I can tell you this, there's no witch that is a God or warlock. So they don't recognize the power of God. We need to pray for them and they will find Jesus, that they will turn to him before it is too late. But I want you to understand that in the Bible, God is giving us strict instructions to stay away from it. In uh, Micah chapter five, verse 12, it says, and I will cut off sorcerers from your hand and you shall have no tellers of fortunes. So he's saying, cut them off. So if you have a friend and they're practicing witchcraft, you told them about Jesus, they don't wanna to turn to God. You don't sit there and just let them do witchcraft all over you and just keep talking about, you've gotta make a decision. Hey, right now, this friendship, this, I don't need to be, aligned and linked up with you. I'm not being mean, I'm not being a bully. I know you're a nice, sweet person, but you're doing witchcraft and I'm over here reading the Bible. Those things don't mix. I'm here for you if you need prayer. I'm here for you if you wanna give your life to Christ, but I need to make sure that I'm not connected to that in this season. You guys, there are some tough conversations that many of you are gonna have to have. And I know it is hard, especially when you're young and you're not used to being able to express yourself or really understand how to really just break it down to people. 
but God will grace you. He will give you the words. And as long as you keep those doors closed and you keep your heart pure before the Lord, he will bless you, he will protect you, and he will raise you up for such a time as this. Do you believe it? Why don't you stretch your hands forward right now as we begin to pray. Come on, why don't you just begin to use your prayer language. If you have your prayer language or just call on the name of Jesus. Call on his name. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we repent right now for putting any God before our God. God, we repent if we've dabbled in any kind of witchcraft, magic, sorcery, if we've dabbled in it, if we were watching it, if we let it into our spirit, God, we repent. God, we turn from it right now. In Jesus' name, we will not go back to it. We will not keep watching those things. We will not keep playing those games with sorcery in them. We will not keep having magic in our rooms. We're getting rid of it today. In Jesus' mighty name. And for that kid that's watching right now, you've been experimenting with spells. You've been, uh, you know, learning about those things. I call you out of that lifestyle right now in the name of Jesus. I break the power of witchcraft off of you. I command every demon silence now in Jesus' mighty name. You will not be sucked into that lifestyle in Jesus' name. God loves you. He's calling you. There is a purpose for your life and it is not the road that you've been going down. Turn to Jesus today and see that he will touch you right where you are. In Jesus' mighty name, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would just touch every heart. Father, that you would convict every heart right now in Jesus' name. And Father, even during this season where witchcraft is arising, we pray protection over all the children right now. We say no loss of life in Jesus' mighty name. We come against kidnappings. We come against... Um, all the things that people will try to do to children even on Halloween night. We come against it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, God, for your protection. We thank you that you're touching children right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Woo! Come on, God is moving. God is moving. I love it. Man, I'm stirred up. I'm super excited, especially for what we're about to watch. We're gonna see some amazing clips. You don't wanna miss it. They were some amazing court kids. They've been sending us videos and I want you to send in your video to courtkidsrevivaltv at gmail.com. It's right there on the screen. Don't forget, get signed up for the core group and I will see you in our next Zoom class. I love you and I will see you next time for Court Kids Revival TV. Boop, boop. I watched the Jenny Weaver video and I felt protected and can I ever go in a Zoom meeting with you Jenny?